Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you with another Adventure into History and today we're with Daniel who hasn't been on the show in a real long time. Since the name change. Since the name change, that's right. So we're actually over here in Alabama today. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few cemeteries over here. The first one we're at though is the old Godwin Cemetery here in Phoenix City. This is one that I've wanted to come to for a while and actually Daniel found a comment where a viewer requested us specifically to come here and look at the grave here so we're going to take a look at that one as well so let's get to it so i've heard about the godwin cemetery for a long time namely for john godwin who's buried here and i had no idea that it was actually this large a cemetery uh, I know none of the real history of this cemetery. I assume that it started as the Godwin Family Cemetery and either grew into his relatives and distant relatives or just a community cemetery here. Looks to me more like a community cemetery here. And this is the grave of John Godwin. But before we get into that grave, I think we need to talk about Horace King. If you're from this part of Georgia or Alabama, um, then uh, no doubt you know the name Horace King. He was a renowned bridge builder here in this area. Um, he was an engineer and he was born into slavery in 1807. In 1849, he was granted his freedom. Well, before that, John Godwin purchased Horace King and he taught him how to read, write, and build during a time that it was illegal to teach slaves such things. In 1849, Horace King got his freedom and became John Godwin's business partner. He purchased land and lived near John Godwin's plantation. In 1859, when John Godwin died, Horace King purchased and placed this stone for his former master, and his name is on the epitaph, so let's have a look. So it says, John Godwin is born October 17th, 1798, and he died February 26, 1859. This stone was placed by Horace King in lasting remembrance of the love and gratitude he felt for his lost friend and former master. So John Godwin was an engineer and he was a bridge builder as well. Horace King, uh, when he was enslaved by John Godwin, was one of his bridge builders and then when Horace King got his freedom uh, he became business partners with John Godwin and they built together after John Godwin's death Horace King continued his business of building and there's several bridges around here that were built by Horace King that remain and there are a lot of bridges that do not remain anymore and we are definitely in Phoenix City yeah, in Siren City. Siren is right on cue yeah, sadly, most of Horace's bridges and John's bridges were uh, covered bridges, one-lane wooden covered bridges, and um, I'm not sure if any of the covered bridges actually exist anymore. There's one in Imlac, Georgia, okay. that exists in its original location. I don't know if the one in Auburn was built by Horace King or not, but it was moved, so... The little small one in yeah. the park? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. I don't and think it was. I don't think it existed there. I think it was placed there. Yeah, it was. It was moved somewhere, um, from somewhere. And Horace King uh, also worked for the Confederacy. He was conscripted into Confederate service um, during the Civil War, and he worked in the Confederate Naval Yard and built stuff for the Confederacy. Um, interesting note is that after the Civil War, Horace King would not take any kind of money other than gold because th during the Civil War he was paid with Confederate currency and after the Civil War was over with he did not have any money because Confederate, Confederate currency was uh, worth nothing after the war. Um, I think in fact he actually sued. He sued somebody, either the US government or I don't know, after the war. I remember reading about that to try to get some money, but it didn't work. I think probably everybody in the South did. Yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> right. It didn't work. But it, Chorus King is an absolutely amazing figure, someone who was born into slavery, uh, purchased his freedom, or was granted his freedom, and 
continued out through his life. He later served in the Alabama Senate, I believe. John Godwin did something in the time when it was illegal to. Yeah. It was illegal to teach an enslaved person to read or write or, or to let them read or write. So, I mean, he, he was a, even though it was the law, you could own somebody, he was a lawbreaker at the same time. Right. Educating somebody and, you know, letting somebody, letting somebody's potential be shown. So That's right, and granting him his freedom. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So. And so this is, looks like the Godwin family plot here, of course. Um, this is Sarah Godwin. She was born August 27th, 1835 and died February 23rd, 1850. This one is unmarked. We do have a Confederate headstone here for Captain John D. Godwin, Company G, 28th Battalion, Georgia Siege Army, Confederate States Army, and Confe Georgia Siege Artillery, rather, Confederate States Army. And he died August 26th, 1885. Martha Godwin and unmarked brick graves. And it looks like there's actually a recent burial here from 2013. Someone who's also no doubt related to the Godwin family. This is a row of babies right here. And it looks like someone came and marked all of these stones at the same time. All of these match. Um, these graves are from 1913, 1918, 1897. The baby Lucy Ford is from 1897. Baby Ethel Ford is from 1894. And baby Martha Brown was born December 18th, 1925 and died January 20th, 1926. The barrels from 1984 and then 1997 there. So it looks like the, the family has continued using this spot. Now this grave is very interesting here. This These two are probably uh, pre-Civil War looking at the construction of the brick and the overall construction of the stone. Yeah, there's another grave right there. It's brick in the ground. I'm not sure the dates, but there looks to be the two of the oldest one look to be underneath those cedar trees over there. Gotcha. We'll check those out in a second. Yeah. I haven't I haven't done enough date looking to see who's the actually oldest one buried here. Right. I say older. I mean they they're kind of the same style as the goblin. But, you know, that one just looks to be older than the rest of them. It does. It does. So one thing, that one has been repaired. And there's, we'll point out some interesting stuff on that in just a minute. But first we'll look at this one. This looks like either a child or maybe a, uh, a younger person. Um, it's, it's a shorter grave. But we can see these bricks are early kind of handmade bricks. Now there were a lot of brickyards over in this area um, up until modern times, uh, but these are very early what we would call plantation era bricks. Um, so I would definitely say that this is a pre-Civil War grave. Now this one has been repaired and what's interesting about it is we can really get a combination of modern brick and old brick here. You can see the modern bricks that are all pretty uniform and very smooth versus the old bricks here that are not. There's a good example too up here. You can see they weren't, the modern bricks are more pressed and more baked hard, like you can see the layers in that one. What's really interesting is when you find one of these early handmade bricks and you find like a fingerprint or thumbprint yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. It's always very cool. Almost like a signature. Yeah. So I saw this when we first got here. This is kind of interesting. Uh, these are concrete, poured concrete headstones uh, that were had stamped letters in them. And as you can see with this one, the concrete's already starting to wear away with this. Uh, this grave is from 1938. That one is from 
1925. But as we have plenty of experience with, these concrete graves eventually do wear almost smooth. Uh, rain really takes its toll on them. So it's interesting that somebody has had the forethought to put these brass markers on here with the information. Then also a child's grave over here, Evelyn Knowles, born July 21st, 1917 and died January 1st, 1919. At the bottom it says, Our Darling. And also landscape wise, it's interesting what a hill that we're on over here. Yeah, it's, it, it's a big rise. I mean, you can't really tell because of how the trees are and everything, but it's it's a pretty good ways down to the road down there. Yeah, it is. All right, well, let's head over this way. So this over there seems to be kind of the newer part of the cemetery. I mean, there's still some older burials over there. This seems to be the older part. This is in remembrance of little Oscar R. Carden, son of Mr. and Mrs. S.C. Carden, born October 30th, 1901, and died December... December 2nd? Yeah, I think that's 2nd. December 2nd, yep, that's 1909. It says those little lips so sweet to kiss are closed for ever now. Those sparkling eyes that shone so bright beneath that pearly brow. That little heart that beats so high free from all care and gloom are hidden now from those he loved beneath the silent tomb. This looks like Ophelia Carden. She was born February the 4th, 1877, and died, looks like June 10th, 1958. It says mother at the bottom. This is S.C. Carden, born March 11th, 1877, died August 21st. It's like 1927. And those two at the end are unmarked. And there's another child here. Donald M. Carden, born March 11th, 1938, and died March 18th, 1940, just a few days after his birthday. And is that, then that, um, I'm sure it was an angel, but time has taken its toll and it sure does look creepy now. It does. But, like you said, it was, I'm sure it was pretty at one time. Yeah. This one is uh, hand, hand inscribed. It's like Willie Mauled Zachary, wife of, and it's gone right there, November 25th. I don't know, 80, 81, or I don't know. Let's see, the death date is May 19th, 19, 1905. 1905. So, you notice the five is backwards? Yeah.
is in memory of little Nellie, daughter of Reverend A.T. and B.H. Hart, born August 5th, 1904. Died March 28th, I believe, 1909. Maybe too far gone. Yeah, I think that one is too far gone. I cannot make it out. Then over here is Ella Wyndham Jenkins. Born September 3rd, 1878, and died June 20th, 1946. So far, the oldest have been the Godwin, who date-wise we have 1859 for John Godwin, and then I believe all of the other uh, brick tombs around him are also pre-Civil War. In fact, if we walk back over there, we can kind of have evidence to support that. And of course, also these that are under the old cedar trees are very old. But something that I did not notice at first with this one is uh, the fact that John Godwin's marker is actually sitting on one of these brick bases as well. And we know this burial is from 1859 and perfectly matches these. So I would definitely say that all of these are pre-Civil War. And it's also got a yeah, steel plate on the top. I wonder, oh, that is a thick steel plate too. Yeah. I guess that's original. It's you probably... You can see on the side over here how thick it is. It's pretty stout. I wonder if that's the way Harsh King designed it. Probably so to disperse the load of that. That's, yeah. That's heavy. Yeah, it is. To keep, it's to keep the material from washing out of the brick. It's right. falling in on itself. Because in all the places I've seen, I've never seen a steel plate on top of yeah. a grave before. He was a smart man. Yeah, he was. And I definitely, I think it's original. Um, we can see lots of damage to it, too over on the corners but again you can see how thick it is right there it's pretty cool so i think that these are probably the oldest and over there unless i'm proven wrong somewhere out here so let's keep going and you found the grave that the uh, viewer requested us look at right yeah. so check it out this is pretty neat right here i don't know if... there's got to be something in the ground but there was a fence here for some reason but there's nothing marked over here Look at this one, this fence around the grave. Yeah. Pretty neat. And everywhere it's got those little Oh wow. Those little um, edge pavers in there. Yeah, we've uh, seen this before in uh, Alabama at an old plantation. And somebody had identified this and thought that it was uh, from overseas really? and it had been imported uh, it's, it's a real common uh, style of pottery I would say from like England hmm. or a real common uh, style of glazed right. this is uh, Lillian Lillian West Dillard March 18th 1901 died March 26th, 1950. I think that's actually March 28th. Yeah, 10 days after her birthday. I wonder if I had something on top of it. Yeah, that's possible. Slid off. This is Josie Freeman. Born November 20th, 1871, and died May 24th, 1916. Again, you can see these glazed stones here.
these are laid flat and you can kind of see it had a design all the way down to the ground. Like that's the part we see sticking up, but it also had that and these little notches in the bottom too. Right. And then this is why we came in here, this fence around the grave here that's probably early 1900s. Oh look, that's a, um, it's actually a glazed piece of pottery there. Yeah. For W.R. West, born September 28th, 1865, and died February 4th, 1915. At the top, it's kind of interesting. It's the eagle with the shield that says, T-O-T-E on the shield and the letters F-L-T in the chain there. It's interesting. I do not know what that means. It's pretty neat. Little turnbuckles to tighten up the fence. Right here. All right, so that was a rude interruption there for just a minute. My camera got too hot, just like we got too hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little warm. It is, camera overheated. Now, I do gotta say, you know, GoPro is the only camera that I know that, you know, overheats doing its job. It has one job and it overheats, filming in 4K. So this is the plot that the viewer requested us to yeah, look I'm at. Yeah, I'll read it because I can't remember. Uh, a gentleman named Keith Vineyard said, when you get a chance, could you walk through Goblin Cemetery in Phoenix City? My great-great-grandparents are buried there. Um, the Coulters. Apparently it's misspelled on the gate, but there isn't a gate. So, after a little bit of searching, we were able to find them. So, Mr. Vineyard, if you're still around watching the channel, this is for you. start here this is Peggy Joyce Knighton born July 10th 1928 and died November 23rd 1928 budded on earth to bloom in heaven also has a brick border around it this is Sadie M Coulter, wife of William W. Hill, born May 7th, 1880, and died December 31st, 1958. Gone but not forgotten. This one is William W. Hill. Oh, you know, I didn't think there was a uh, birth date on there, but there is. You want to? Is it? Yeah. Let's see if you can get down there. I'll shade it for you. March 8th, 1882, March 7th, 1927. We've seen a lot of people that died right around their birth date today. And it had what was a Masonic symbol, but it's almost all gone. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm gonna use the, the, I use the turbo torch. Turbo torch. This is L.H. Coulter, born May 10th, 1853, died July 8th, 1913. I think that's July 6th. Is it? I believe so. 6th, okay. 1913. Age 60 years. Our mother. Mm -hmm. Another Masonic. Yep. Memory of W. H. Coulter. That would be that gentleman's great great grandfather. March 19th, 1843. February 14th, 1903. Dearest Father, thou hast left, left us and our lost 
we deeply feel but his but his God that but his God that has bereft us he can all our sorrows heal very common yeah. epitaph there I think this one is smooth this one's a stamp oh is it so I don't know if we're going to be able to read it or not let's see in memory of the what's that first name Willie, maybe? Willie. See, I-N-I-E. Vinny. Vinny. Good job, Hunter. Vinny Coulter. On July. Ooh. Oh, that's small. Yeah, they ran out of broom for the big stamp. 18-something. 1888, maybe? Uh, December 24th, 1897. I think that's earlier than that. I think that's like 1838. 34. Maybe. That's not three to two. Back up. December. That's 24, Mr. Yeah, Hunter. 24. Oh. Peter. That's a Huh. Yeah. Epitaph right there. The way it's stamped in there. It looks like his name again. Yeah, right his there. name is right there. Peter. Oh, wait, Precious there you go. Vinny. Precious Vinny. She has left us. Little. Maybe. I don't know. That's tough. Yeah, it's, I've never, I've never seen like a stamp like that. If it was, if we didn't have the sun working against us, I think we might be able to make it out. But the sun is definitely working against us. And just across the way, that is a Stuart Ironworks shield on there hmm. from Cincinnati, Ohio. Very common gate company. They probably came in on the railroad, probably about the 1880s. What is the name down there? Uh, H. Cochran. Cochran. Oh, no, there's another letter there. J.H. Cochran. Let's find your J.H. Cochran. This is a grave from 1988 here. He was a World War II veteran. And I believe this is the namesake of this plot. So, yeah. Let you run that this time. In memory of John H. Cochran, son of Thomas G. and Julia A. Cochran. Born at Roswell, Georgia, January 2nd, 1853. Died at Girard, Girard Alabama, December 19th, 1909. Age 56 years, 11 months, 17 days. The image of thy loving face, whose Radiance. whose radiance cheered us on life's way shall have in memory's fond embrace shall live in memory's fond embrace as long as reason holds her sway the joys and hopes and smiles and tears the shadows of those passing years the days and weeks and months but seem the fragrance of a happy dream. A happy dream. Huh. So Gerard is Phoenix City, correct? And technically, it's a little tiny bit south of Phoenix City. Gotcha. It, it's people still refer to some places around here as Gerard and or Phoenix City. Gotcha. Um, but I know it as back towards almost at the river, like had it kind of across from South Columbus on the riverside. That yeah. was the area I know of as Gerard. Gotcha. So, and another interesting thing to note while we're here is we are in Alabama, which is a little bit older than where we usually film. So the where we usually film in Georgia and Harris Talbot County areas uh, was settled in 1826, um, and over here wasn't settled until 1836, after the Creek War of 1836. Uh, this was all this was the Creek Nation up until 1836 when the final creek war was and then the creek trail of tears where they were removed 
about 20 miles south of here is the old Spanish Fort. That's right. On the river on the Alabama side. The old Spanish Fort. Now that's a teaser for an upcoming video. <laughs> And that predates all of that. Yeah. Wait, we'll go back and bleep that one out. And right. We'll surprise them with yeah, it one day. Yeah, that's right. The Spanish Fort dates back, what, to the 16th? 1619, I think. Or maybe yeah. 1650. I don't know. Somewhere in the 1600s. So that's, that's definitely some old history over here in Alabama. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and seeing the Godwin Cemetery with us. Several very interesting graves here and a lot more that we haven't had time to touch on but I think we filmed most of the historic ones although everybody buried here is an individual story so I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time on adventures into history featuring rushing around town <laughs>